All right, folks, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how to wrap text around an object on InDesign. Um, this is a really important tool to learn to use, um, not just for things like, you know, basic tidiness and organization, but also things like, uh, well, this specific technique was on, or has been on previous exam papers. So it's always worth knowing how to do this just just in case it's on there again. So it's a really important thing to use. So we're going to look at two different ways how you can approach this. Now which technique you use will depend on the complexity of the image. Um, one will be a very simple image with a very simple background and foreground and one that's a little bit more complicated. So first we need to do is get a picture that I want onto my InDesign canvas. So I'm just going to quickly place an image. Oops, oh god, an image on there. There's one, and I need to get some text on there as well. So obviously, I'm not talking through what I'm doing now because there are already videos to go with this stuff. So if you forget what it is I'm doing here, so placing objects putting text onto in design, um, go back and check out the videos for those as well, just as a bit of a recap. Uh, so let's link those together. Oops, goes there, and then that one goes there. Love the stuff, right. So let's say for argument's sake, I want to wrap this text here around this image. Now what the new InDesign does is it's got a little tool called Detect Edges, which means it will basically use AI to try and predict where it thinks the edges of your images are. So it will wrap the text around the object for you. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you've got your picture or your object selected. So I'm going to click on the picture with my selection tool. I've got my picture selected. I'm then going to go to Window. I'm going to go to text wrap and I'm going to select this one here, wrap object around shape. Now if I click that, you'll see obviously that's not going to work. But what you want to make sure you've got selected is you want to make sure that your contour options are selected to detect edges. Right now, what that should do is it should detect where it thinks the edges of your images are. So at the moment, what it's doing is it's doing it around the entire frame. We don't want that. So I'm going to choose detect edges, and in theory, this should work. There you go. <clears throat> Happy days. It's not perfect, but it's doing a pretty good job. So you can see there, if I zoom in a little bit, it's automatically created the edge of the image for me and it's wrapped my text around there nice and easy and automatically and even if I adjust these text boxes it all adjusts for me as well like that. Um, now granted this method is not perfect because you can see there that bit is a little bit close there a little bit close there so if you find that is the case you can increase I'll click back on my image again where's it gone oh god there we go so if you find that it's not perfect you can increase this number here, which is the offset of the image, of the, it's the offset, which basically means the space between the image and the text. So if I just nudge that up one millimeter, maybe two, you can see it's just pushing it away a little bit. And it's just giving that little bit more breathing space to make it a little bit more, well, a little bit further away, so it's not too cramped. Um, Basically it really. That's how you do with a nice and simple image. Okay? The key thing there is to make sure your contour options are set to detect edges. I think it might work with graphic frame as well. I've not tried that before. Oh no, it doesn't never mind, ignore me. So detect edges is what you want to use. Alright? But that only works with images that have really simple foreground and backgrounds. So for example, this picture here. It's just a picture and it's got a plain transparent background. So chances are, if you've done your work in a studio, it should work quite well, especially if you've cut the background out from the image. Um, however, what you might have a bit more trouble with is if you're using an image that's a bit more complicated. So I'm just going to go and set up this same thing again, but with a more complicated image. So if I delete, oops, 
delete the image, draw my frame, file, place, image one, open, and then just for my layers, I'm going to send this layer to the, this to the back. So right click, arrange, send to the back. So you can see that this image is much more complicated because you've not got to play my background, you've got all these different textures in there as well. Now, you could try and use that same technique again, but there is no guarantee that it's going to work for you because the image is much more complicated. So what that, might, what that means is we've got to basically create our outline ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the pen, oh, no, this one, the pen tool here, all right? And what we're going to do, using the pen tool, we're going to draw around the outside of this image. But before you start doing that, you want to make sure that your fill has got the red line through it and your stroke is set to zero because that way, otherwise, if you, if you have the fill selected, it means your selection is going to be filled with a big blocky color. And if you've got a stroke selected, it means you're going to have a line around the outside. So always make sure that these are set to zero. So I'm going to get a pen tool and then I'm just going to start to click around the edge of my image slowly like that. What you'll probably see is that there is a black line where I'm clicking. And that's fine it's because it means I've got a stroke um, set to one pixel in my settings. But I can change that after I've finished. So for now, I'm just going to carry on clicking. I'm going to try and make sure that my uh, path is being as consistent as I can when I'm going around the image and that way it will mean that when I wrap the text around it when I'm finished it will be pretty consistent. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's not, you know, it's a tricky thing to do to get it all exactly at equal distance. Uh, if you are doing this and you ever make a mistake and you click bags and like over there, just press backspace once and that will take you back. There we go. So, <clears throat> draw my path. I'm just gonna go back to my path actually because I need to take that stroke off again. So, pop it down to zero, there we go. So what you've done there, you can see that I've drawn a path for my object, okay? And what I wanna make sure is I've got that path selected. Now that path is invisible, you can't see it, but it's still a layer there. So with that path selected, I'm now going to go to Window, Text Wrap, and then I'm going to choose Wrap Around Object, and there we go. Now my text wraps around my shape using my path as its guidelines there. So this bit's a bit more fiddly. Um, you can see that if I shift and W it, oops, select W it, yeah. There we go. You can see there goes nicely around the object like that. All right, so that's a bit more complicated. I'd only really recommend using that if you've got a particularly complicated image that you want, that you have to wrap text around. Um, but obviously take your time with that one because it's not something that you should rush. I mean, they've not really done a great job there. I mean, it looks a bit rubbish around here. You can also see as well that even though I, even though my text is all on the right hand side of my page, um, I drew my path around the entire image and that's basically just a little bit of a safety net just in case I get the urge to move my text boxes around I want to draw my path again all right I can just move them as I like and it will still work so I'd always recommend doing the entire image if you are doing that way 
All right, if you're doing it the other way, you won't need to worry too much about that, but it's just something to bear in mind if you are you know, not quite sure on where you want your text to go. All right, uh, this only works with text boxes as well. If it's a, if it's a picture of text that you've taken off um, Photoshop, it's not gonna work. So it will only work with text boxes that you've put directly onto InDesign. Um, so hopefully, I mean, I'd, I'd rather, well, I'd hope you only really need to use the first technique. But if you do need to use this one, it is something that's worth practicing just to make sure you can get it right. Because sometimes people get a bit confused on why it's not working in this because you've not got the right layers chosen. So if you find this technique isn't working, just make sure you go to your layers, which is there, and then make sure you've got path chosen. The path is the thing that you've just drawn. So make sure the little blue box is chosen there for path. All right. Um, so very likely this one could this one could be on the exam paper. Um, it's been on it in the past. But even if it's not, it's still something that I'd recommend using because it is a nice, a nice little sort of showy offy skill that you can use if you want to do a bit more than what the exam paper is asking you, which is never not a bad idea. All right. Uh, if you've got any questions on that, send me an email, come and see me, you know where to find me. Other than that, I will catch you next time.